Hello, everybody. I'm Don Thompson, and I'm here to welcome you to the Big D Jamboree. because these lights are bright. We're going to divide the room right in the middle here. $50 goes to the side that yells the lattice, and we're going to try it. So perk up. Wait a minute. Oh, yelling in advance takes two points from your team. Hold on. Right down the middle right here. Let's try it on the right-hand side. You ready? Let me hear a big howdy. Hey, that's not too bad. Left-hand side. How about you? Son of a gun. I think it's a tie. I'll have to keep the $50. I don't know what to think about that. You're gonna see some fantastic talent tonight. This, uh, the Big D Jamboree, has been the springboard for some of the most famous names in country music. It's kind of, I feel, I feel like the ghost of the greats are standing on the stage with us and they're looking at me saying, what are you doing up there, you faker, you? <laughs> no, really, we're, we're gonna have a big time. You're gonna enjoy the talent. This gentleman likes to go fishing. That's the only thing he likes to do besides sing, but, that's not necessarily all he gets to do, but I didn't go into all of that with him. How about let's give a hand to a gentleman here for the final one of our amateur talent tonight, Tommy Horton. Let's hear it for him. <laughs> I used to have it on Saturday nights, and I remember I'd pull that radio in, I'd go to bed and lay there and listen to the Big D Jamboree, and my folks come in there and say, turn that radio down so we can get some sleep. But uh, I'd, I'd turn it down as low as I could and still have my ear in it listening to Big D Jamboree and lay awake at night dreaming about it, just hoping someday that I'd get a chance. And it was like a dream come true to me. I was born in Brownwood in well, 1948. I guess I claim my home to be Santa Ana, a little old place. 22 miles west of Brownwood. To me, this is the prettiest part of the world I've ever been in, around these beautiful pines and hardwood trees and on this lake here. I just love it. When I was uh, 13, I, I did. I got a mail order gift card from Sears and Roebuck. And, uh, How much did it cost? It cost me $14. $14. <laughs> and uh, I was in Grand Valley, Colorado at the time, and I hoed raspberries. And the first morning out there at work, he put me a, gave me a hoe and he said, you will hoe this raspberry patch. <laughs> so uh, I did. I commenced to hoeing. And it seemed like I'd go down these rows and hoe these weeds out of these raspberry patches. And uh, I'd get through hoeing the whole patch, and then I'd have to go back and start over. <laughs> and for all summer, just one continuous round of hoeing raspberries out there. How much did he pay you? He paid me about a dollar a day. Does uh, hoeing raspberry sounds like a bore, but thinking about getting a guitar did that make that, sense? That helped because I knew I was gonna I was gonna buy a guitar with some of the money that I earned there, and uh, I saved my pennies, and 
dimes all I could, and uh, the mail truck would come up there every day, and he pulled up and honks, you know, and you got something too big for the box. And I knew when he pulled up there and honked, that was my guitar. <laughs> and I mean to tell you, I went running out of the house like a, well, it's like a happiest kid in the world, I guess, a kid with a new piece of candy or something, got that guitar. And uh, I remember telling my mother, I said, all the strings aren't the same size. <laughs> and I just about <laughs> fell over. I thought all the strings were going to be the same size on it. Did you know how to hit a lick on it or tune no, it or anything? No, I didn't. I didn't know a darn thing about it. Pretty Saturday, you broke on Sunday. On Monday, you feeling sore. You got two black eyes that you picked up from a little guy the night before. So you swear off drinking, but when you get to thinking about the good times you had galore. You keep a having your fun, you lucky son of a gun on a honky-tonk hardwood floor. On a honky-tonk hardwood floor, on a honky-tonk hardwood floor. You keep a having your fun, you lucky son of a gun. Horton drove up from Jacksonville one Saturday afternoon last month to audition for the Jamboree. The judges were impressed. He was the only one that afternoon that made it to the finals a month later. One by one, nervous singers trooped to the stage to sing to a cavernous, empty house with an audience of three judges sitting out there somewhere in the darkness. I was very, very nervous because oh, the Big D Jamboree, I think, to me, is a pretty good-sized show, and it's known. It was pretty famous, really. I don't really... But, uh, yes, to answer your question, yes, I was. I was darn nervous. <laughs> I think probably most of the people there were probably just as nervous as I was. Maybe I think it was probably about all the same. Did you hear that the brunette girl who sang You Ain't Woman Enough to Take My Man in Jamestown Ferry? Oh, that was that Frances Austell. You bet I did. That gal has got one whale of a voice on her. He just called the Jamestown Ferry. It's not a hot day in January Like he said it'd be if he ever left me He said he'd ever leave me after saying how much he needs me, but the facts still remain. I'm sitting here all alone with the thought of my baby. It's enough to drive me crazy. It was the sweetest piece of love I've ever known. Probably one of the first clubs I ever remember playing in, really getting to, to going into the music business was when I, was, when I was in the Navy, I was stationed in Corpus Christi. And I started off in a little club called Mary's Lounge down on Air Street there. That's where I started learning some of my, where I could have uh, a little bit of poise and not be so doggone nervous, I guess. And uh, of course, I had chances playing several clubs down there with several different bands. And I started learning more songs and and uh, learning how to smile a little bit instead of having such a <laughs> dud look on my face, you might say. I saw the one I loved and lost last night again. I smiled and said hello like we were still old friends. Don't pity me, it never mattered anyhow. But oh, She could see me know that the nightlife's gone. How sad I really look without my party face on. The way I just give up, sit down and cry out loud. But oh, if she could see me now. On first day. Down deep inside of me I drink too much and say Who wants her anyhow But oh, if she could see me now If she could see me know That the nightlife's gone How sad I'd really look Without my party Oh, 
sit down and cry out loud. But oh, if she could see me now. But oh, if she could see me now. I'm sure you know this just as well as I do, or I'm sure lots of musicians can tell you the same thing. The, the music field is very, very unpredictable. And But I believe that a person, if he wants it bad enough, and I keep going back to what Tony Douglas has always told me. He's told me many times, he said, if you're willing to work hard enough and wait long enough, well, it'll come. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to work hard enough, and I'm waiting long enough, I hope. And someday I'm going to wait long enough and say, well, it happened. But I think uh, so many musicians that are unknown that want to make it so bad, they just want to bingo overnight success like that. And that just doesn't happen very often. Once in a while, somebody will come along that's an overnight success, but... Uh, you got to work hard at it and hang in there and know what you're going for. And that's what I'm doing. I'm just hanging in there and I know what I'm going for and I'm going to break my back to get it. Two, two of the uh, performers who were up here tonight so impressed the judges that they wound up with a dead tie. And I'd like to have you give a big hand for these two gentlemen first. Tommy Horton and Eddie Byrne. <laughs> Let's have a big hand for tonight's winner of the Big Jamboree, Eddie Burns! <laughs> 